think about this idea that there's so many kind of heavy slices of slice, those sort of, you know, moments that seem almost caught unawares or, or caught in, in, in sort of in-between moments. And I don't know whether that was just something you set out very specifically, Mark, to get those kind of in between the cracks kind of feelings rather than the big dramatic kind of showdown. Yes, yeah, was my natural inclination is to undercut any kind of um, build up towards melodrama. So I'm always like fighting against false drama or melodrama. So I feel like the way I always do it personally and my friends is to always like slip in jokes or just bring the person down a little bit or um, rather than go for the obvious um, melodramatic scene at the end with two people, you know, shouting their feelings at each other in the corridor. I'm not really interested in that because it's not my life. So it's more like these little kind of throwaway comments that kind of make you smile or seem very flippant. But then you, the subtext hopefully uh, is kind of loaded with their, the relationship between the people that are, that are saying it. Especially if there's characters where at least one of them isn't great at communicating mm. and uh, yeah. articulating. Or one of them, that's one of me, and the other one is very, very young and mm. not experienced in life that there's going to be so much of it's going to be subtext and in between the... And anyway, the most interesting th thing in any film is always when people aren't talking, in my opinion. I did a thing from, from an early point, just as a sort of, you know, cinematic reference, that sort of paper moon feeling and, and, mm. and but sort of, you know, as if Ken Loach or the Darden brothers went in that direction with it. And I don't know whether there were kind of discussions about, well, this is where we're headed with this, this is what we'd like as a reference point or whether you, you wanted it to be a... Well, visually, that's where I started, you know, I started off, I mean, my, my cinematographer, um, I, st I tried to, I gave him all, like, all my Darden brothers collection and I think he watched the first 10 minutes, it's not his thing, but he got what I was going for. Right. Um, but also like Cleo, like Cleo Barnard, Selfish Giant was, and Andrew Arnold, um, they were all kind of visually the world I wanted us to be in. Um, because I suppose like for me, it's, it's, it, because of budget restraints as well, it was like a really natural way to go photographically. You know, we're only using natural light. We're going to use the Midlands and parts of Dublin and film them in hopefully a new and interesting way and show them off um, in kind of a beautiful way was the intention. Um, so it was kind of to, to, to not totally go down the Ken Loach um, social realist uh, route, but also to kind of put a little bit, you know, if there, was, if there was sun out there, we're going to shoot into the sun, we're really going to like try and make um, the Midlands look really beautiful. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry, yeah, but I mean, the, you, you certainly picked the two out of three there because the Dardenne Brothers, I knew were a big influence of yours, and Paper Moon was something that came up almost immediately mm -hmm. in our conversation, and when I had read it, I mean, you know, it's a world away from Paper Moon, but that kind of relationship was... Uh, a paper moon one. <laughs> <laughs> Matchstick Men. Matchstick Men. Did you ever see the Matchstick Men? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, those kind of films with the the kid or Kramer versus Kramer. Or any of those. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. like it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic that I've always uh, really appreciated. All those films and where an, an adult and a kid who uh, you know aren't necessarily you know well fitted or you know have some kind of thing between them where it's making their life either difficult or one of them's trying to learn off the other or look after the other and he's not, not capable of it. There's always been something that I've been quite um, interested in and was actually looking forward to at some point somebody coming along with a, a script uh, where I got to play opposite a kid. Well I'm guessing from an acting point of view and, and you've done one or two films before I think Aidan so that idea that you just don't know until you get on to maybe the rehearsal or whatever that, that, that there's always that thing about working with a child that could you know, not necessarily work. It could be difficult. It could be a little bit difficult for them to get into the rhythm. But obviously, we can see that she's brilliant in this. But was that ever a concern? No, or? Well, you know, the thing when the script came along was I was saying, yeah, this looks great, and um, I'm in. But you're going to have to get a really good kid, uh, and we didn't want to rehearse right. or meet meet up before shooting, just so that you know whatever that awkwardness or getting to know each other could be caught on film, so or on camera. Um, yeah. And, and Mark had a, a lead on you know, a few kids to look at and that worked out fine and she's brilliant. But, but I don't know whether that was a love letter or whether there was a sort of sense of, I, like, the, like the cones with, with the Fargo is a kind of a poison love letter in a way, sort of saying I love it and at the same time this, this place drives me crazy. I don't know if there was any kind of that going on for you. I think it was definitely a love letter. I mean, like the kind of thing we tried to capture the Midlands in like a really kind of beautiful way. Um, so I don't feel like we made it look grubby or bad. I think, you know, it's quite it's a quiet place, it's a lonely place often because it's, you know, it's quite an underpopulated area. Um, but I, I suppose I like those kind of places, you know. It's you hard to, to hide in. 
Yeah, that's, so that's for is, sure. Yeah. You know, important for this. You, you know, always, you're, you can't you can't really hide, or you know, mm. you're you can't disappear into the distance really. Or you go into town, yeah. you're going to be yeah found. Just, you're going to be found. Yeah, but I suppose like there aren't. We were just saying actually there aren't that many Midlands people in the film. You know, the, it, it's yeah. about two dubs and a Belgian and a Romanian who happen to be in this kind of caravan park that's a weird kind of limbo for them. They're all, they all seem to be quite transient. Um, so I suppose, yeah, for me it's a love letter, you know, because I think, I think the movie looks great and I think it would look different if it was shot anywhere else. And I really wanted my first movie as well to be like from where I grew up and in somewhere that I know very well.